Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. First of all, happy Easter, happy Easter weekend. My goodness me, I don't know where you are, but where we are, it is wall to wall sunshine. Bright blue skies and not a cloud up there. It is absolutely glorious. Yesterday we went to very, very dear friends of ours for lunch. It truly was a very good Friday. Today I am at home and I am in full chiffing mode. <laughs> Tomorrow we are entertaining and it is going to be an Easter extravaganza and I am going to share with you today and tomorrow how I entertain at home. Everything from Easter tablescapes, nicky nacky bits that I've recently got that I've had for years, even a few pieces that have been handed down to me. We're going to cook, we're going to bake, we're going to do floral arranging. I've literally just had a delivery from Flowered and they've been so generous and they have sent the florals for my tablescape which I am so excited about. I've literally just popped them in the sink just so that they can have a good slug of water before we tear them apart <laughs> and put them into some beautiful bud vases. We're going to do absolutely everything together and I cannot wait to share this with you. So let's get started. The flowers have just arrived from Flowered and look at how special spectacular these beautiful Grand Prix pale blush pink roses are they are just magnificent very kindly sent some beautiful pale pink spray roses with the Grand Prix ivory roses and then of course it is Easter so they very kindly also send a huge bouquet of tulips I cannot wait to get started on this tablescape. Look at how beautifully they come. Look at these stunning cylinders. I think they're absolutely beautiful. The tulips are going to look incredible on the table and I just can't get over these blush roses. They are just magnificent. I can't wait to start this tablescape. I am actually going to break up a few of these bouquets and create beautiful little posy vases for the table. I've just popped the flowers into the sink with some cold water. Actually, a really, really good tip. If your tulips flop, I have a trick for you. Now, a lot of people put a copper penny, and it does work. However, the reason why your tulips are flopping is because of the shock of the difference in temperature from outside to inside. So, a little tip that I have is that when you buy them, if they're wrapped up like this, or even if you're buying them from the supermarket and they've got the cellophane, keep them tightly wrapped up. Leave them in a vase of water or even in the sink like I have today and they acclimatize, leave them for a couple of hours and they will stand bolt upright <laughs> so they won't flop. So a little tip of mine, what I like to do is leave them for a few hours just so that they can get used to the heat of the house and then whilst they are doing that we can go and pick out our bud vases. What I like to do is get everything out that I think is going to go together and create a little bit of an edit for the tablescape. Just so I've got a good idea in terms of numbers, I've got a few more of these actually already on the table. So I'm probably going to have six or if not eight of these with beautiful tulips and roses. I'm then gonna use these bud vases. I actually picked these up at Covent Garden Flower Market. Cheap as chips and last you for years. And then I can really, really get an understanding of how much space I have, how many flowers I need. And then we jot all the different little nicky nacky bits in the middle. Now, whilst the flowers are acclimatizing to the new temperature inside, I thought I'd do a very, very quick unboxing of a few new pieces for the tablescape. As you guys know, when I invest in something, it's something that has to last a lifetime and be able to come out time and time again for lots of different occasions throughout the year. And Rebecca Oodle has the most beautiful collection of stunning homeware, tableware, bath towels. I mean, honestly, the list goes on and on. Her bed sheets 
are to die for. They are so beautiful. If you love a scalloped edge as much as I do, you need to go and look at her website. It is something else. Anyway, I wanted to show you how beautifully gift wrapped this is. I am absolutely besotted with the tissue paper. I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a close up. Oh, if I can reach you. There we go. So when you order something from Rebecca Oodle, the gift wrapping is truly next level. It is absolutely exquisite. I am beyond besotted with this tissue paper. It always pains me when I have to rip it open. Yes, with one hand. It is really rather difficult. Okay, I think. Oh, we're in. We're in. Oh, look at this. Just the epitome of class. Everything comes in the most beautiful linen dust bags. I'm going to spin this round and open it with you. I've popped you back so that you can see what I am seeing. So, I have ordered the most beautiful napkins for the table and they come in the most stunning, incredible quality linen dust bag. Almost like how you would have your shoes, but her stuff is truly creme de la creme. So let's open this up and have a little look. Oh gosh, they are even more beautiful than what they looked like online. Oh, look at the colors. Are they not just glorious? So I went with a theme, of course, that I would be able to use all throughout the year. They are so beautiful. And as I said, it's something that I can bring out time and time again with the greens, the purples, the little hints of yellow and the scalloped edge. I am obsessed with anything with the scalloped edge. I have the most beautiful bed sheets and towels from Rebecca Oodle. So I would highly recommend to go and have a little look at the website and to gift this would be just such a beautiful beautiful thing to receive now these are something that I have been lusting after for really rather a long time and they're very they're actually really heavy but it just goes to show what incredible quality Rebecca Oodle is Rebecca Oodle very, very kindly sent the salt and pepper mills. Quality is sublime. And look at the detail. I don't know whether you can see almost the engraving and the carving on the pepper mill itself. Now, if I go on the inside, I'm going to take out the grinder part. I need to pop some peppercorns in there. No? Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I am actually practical, but mm, okay, right. Oh gosh, losing the top. That would not be very good, would it? Okay, so now this needs to thread onto that. And voila! Oh, isn't it beautiful? Just absolutely stunning. I really want you to see the detail of the engraving. It's got these beautiful little flowers and petals. So this is in fact the salt mill. Now let's open the pepper mill. Oh god, they're so beautiful. Just having a pair on the table really elevates the whole tablescape, just bringing all of the tiny little details around our home together. We have brass taps, we have a brass sink, we have lots of different little gold bits throughout the house. And I think that these are stunning and I can't tell you the quality. I wish you could, ooh, oh, that was a quick one. Oh, um, I wish you could feel the weight of this. There we go. And voila! They are Rebecca Oodle's Brass Salt and Pepper Mills. Oh, they're gorgeous. I am in love with those. I need to fill them with salt and pepper and then we will place them at the very end on our table. And lastly, but certainly not least, I actually unboxed something from Rebecca, I would say a few months ago now, and she very kindly sent six of her placemats, but I needed two extra. We were meant to be eight 
for tomorrow. We have now grown <laughs> a little bit. We are now 12 guests tomorrow, so I'm going to have to pay a little bit of jiggery pokery with the table to ensure it all looks beautiful. But I am actually a couple short now of placemats. I had it perfectly organized and now we are four short, but I do have other bits and pieces that we can try and incorporate and make sure that the table looks incredible. But that is what I chose from Rebecca Oodle. Again, pieces that you can dress up, dress down for every single occasion throughout the year. Birthdays, Valentine's, Christmas, spring, summer. I am in love with this brand. The quality is just sublime. And in terms of gifting, like I said, their gift wrapping really makes it feel that touch more special. I can't wait for you to see what these are going to look like on the table. Right, I actually have one more package to unbox with you. It's actually not homey or interiors whatsoever, but it might just be the dress that I am going to wear tomorrow. Are you sunbathing? Are you a little sunbathing sausage? Are you? It's such beautiful weather that the boys are sunbathing sausages today. So I have actually spoken to you about this brand before. It is a brand founded by one of my gorgeous girlfriends, Lauren, aka the LA Way. If you have watched my Monaco vlog, you'll know that we recently went for a cup of coffee to talk all things business. And this is her incredible luxury ladies wear business. It's called Arvel and it is just the epitome of class and luxury. So let's unbox this together. I think she actually chose this dress for me. She thought that it would be one of my favorite colors apparently and would be perfect for Easter. So let's have a little look. Just going to move this slightly out the way just in case I knock them over. I want to show you again the beautiful gift wrapping. So stunning branded tissue paper, along with a little note to say when it was packaged and who by. It's just those little tiny details that just make a package that bit more special. And on, oh, it certainly is. One of my favorite colors. Look at this. Oh my goodness me. It's like a duck egg, I would say, like a pale blue, but with a slight little greeny tone. It's certainly duck egg blue. Oh my goodness me. It is beautiful. I think this could be the perfect dress for tomorrow. Fingers crossed it fits me. I'm gonna have to move this out of the way. Oh gosh, oh, it's all going terribly wrong. <laughs> I'm smashing the place to bits. I am blown away by this dress. It is the most beautiful dark egg blue. It's got the stunning buttons down the front. It is a boat neck. Now you guys know I love a boat neck. I think it is so flattering, so feminine and ladylike, but it is the design and the cut of Lauren's collection that puts it in a different stratosphere. I'm going to have to stand back a bit, or I suppose hold it up. Isn't it Stunning. It's got a full skirt, which I love. I think it's going to be a real swishy number. It's got pockets, which as you know, I love a good pocket. You can pop a lip gloss, you can put your phone, my camera, very handy. And even on the inside, look at this fabric. It's fully lined in silk. This is stunning. This is absolutely 100% a contender for tomorrow. What do we think? I'm so in love with this. I can't wait to try it on. It does need a little bit of a steam. I'm going to feel like a fairy tale princess tomorrow. So that is all my new bits. I'm now going to show you what I've had for absolute years that I bring out every single Easter. I just love them. It's almost like a bit of a family tradition now. And I just think they make every tablescape. There are also so many memories with different nicky nacky bits. You sort of put them on the table and you remember <laughs> where they were last year and how the party ended last year. Most of the time it ends on the kitchen island. We have 
really quite a sublime sound system in this kitchen. The sonor system is all inbuilt throughout the roof and actually in the um, above the kitchen cabinets. They're sort of like above here, above there. That surround system and the volume is nuts. So our kitchen island really does take an absolute battery. And we've had about 30 ladies jumping up and down, dancing. I don't think that's how tomorrow is going to end. <laughs> I can't promise you, but um, yes, when you look at little bits and pieces that you put on the table, you do remember the years that we've had and um, the fun that we've had. Anyway, Gosh, this vlog is probably going to be hours long, but I'm loving every moment of it with you guys. Welcome back to the scullery. Okay, so the flowers have been resting for about half an hour. And by the time I do the roses, the tulips hopefully would have had enough time to acclimatize. So, in terms of the kind of vibe we're going for on the main table in the kitchen, I'm thinking greens, pinks, fresh whites, maybe a hint of yellow. Um, so I'm actually going to use, as I showed you before, these vases. Normally you work in three, so I'm probably going to do six of these. And then I'm going to do six of the little clear bud vases. And then I'm going to see how we're getting on. I don't want it to look like a wedding <laughs> where it's just floral heavy. We do have so many other gorgeous little pieces. I've actually made a little bit of an edit over here. I've got some beautiful little pink birds, as you can see. They're little floofy numbers. And then actually a collaboration that I did last year with John Carter very kindly left me these beautiful silk petals. And they've got the most beautiful pale pink centers. So I think that they will look stunning down the center of the table. Maybe we might even do them on the table placings. Hmm. We'll have a little go together. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to now take the rose bouquet apart, which seems just absolutely heartbreaking, if I'm honest. I hate taking apart a beautiful bouquet like this because there's such talent to get roses to sit like that and it's just stunning. But I'm not looking to have a huge pale pink bouquet in one floral arrangement. So unfortunately they are coming apart. These are so beautifully done. Oh, there goes the roses. So they've already prepped them for me, which is fantastic. So I don't have all of the sharp little thorns at the bottom and any of the leaves that we don't want. So they are actually perfect. Now it all comes down to height, how high we want them. And also I'm going to be popping in some tulips and some spray roses. So I need to ensure they're not too tall. I want the tulips to sit roughly the same height as the roses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just gauge it. I always cut them on the angle and then actually a slight little split up the stem. No, and then I just test it. I keep popping it into the vase as so, just to get the height that I would like. And then you can always cut more off once you've cut it <laughs> they're gone. So I would highly recommend to keep them slightly taller than you would like them and then cut them down because I have been in a situation before where I've cut them all far too low and ended up with some stubby vases. <laughs> I mean, these roses will always look stunning, so I can't really do that much harm, but I am going to keep them slightly longer just to ensure but they look perfect. Okay, right, they are looking amazing. And I'm going to just pop them into the water just so that they still continue to get that lovely drink of fresh water. Take off a few of the leaves. I'm going to do the rest of the bouquet and come back just to ensure I do not bore you all. <laughs> I've prepared 
probably I would say about six or seven of the pink roses and I've just taken the tulips apart and I've actually separated them. I'm going to use the whites and the yellows along with the pinks. These pinks don't quite go with the tablescape that I'm creating so I'm going to actually pop them into the powder room, the ladies downstairs loo and just scatter them at other places in the house that I think that the colour will really pop. It just doesn't tie in with the tablescape so something that's really really important to ensure that um, all the colours go together and there isn't sort of like a really harsh vibrant pink going with a soft pastel pink. So yes, very very Easter colours. Um, pinks, yellows and whites. We're also going to have just a hint of blue in there. I know it sounds crazy but trust me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create one of the vases. Now if you have filled up your sink it's really handy because you can have all the florals, I will show you, in the sink still getting water so you don't ever have a moment where the, the flowers are gasping for water and then what you can do is literally just dunk the vases into the water. Now I'm going to create my first one, get it perfect and then recreate the other ones. Whereas if you do them all at the same time, I personally feel like a little bit confused. Just ensure that you're happy with the first one and then you can just copy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few roses. Okay, so that is too high. Chop off again a little bit more. Take off a couple of those little leaves. And again, another thing that Stephanie taught me that you'd think I would have known is that it's really good to understand the way that the rose falls or the flower falls. There's no point trying to make it fall the other way. They are only going to go one way. In flower arranging, you work in threes. So if you have three roses, you then have to have six. So I've got to ensure that I have enough for all of them. So that is the three roses in. I think we could actually go shorter. I'm now going to dot in the beautiful tulips. Oh, gosh, they're gonna look so good. So good. Oh, I can't wait. It's sort of like all the fresh greens. I think it's just so pretty this time of year. And the garden, if I get time and this vlog isn't a thousand hours long, we'll go for a really quick spin around the gardens and I'll show you the parts of the garden that are blooming. We've got so many daffodils, we've got hyacinths, the tulips in the courtyard garden are honestly just phenomenal beautiful I mean I go out there and it's my happy place it just makes me smile and I hope it will make you smile too so once we get through these flowers we will then go for a very quick spin around the garden I'm sure the saucisses will enjoy that too I had these during the week some beautiful white tulips and purple again the purple is not going to fit in with our tablescape for tomorrow so I will take the purple out put those alongside the pink and actually they go beautifully together and I'm going to use these as well. No wastage in this household when it comes to florals. I'm going to give that a little bit of a chop off and pop those in there as well. I actually think in terms of height we can go a touch lower. Gorgeous! I'm going to perfect this one and come back and show you and then I'm probably going to pop it on a time lapse <laughs> and then quickly whisk through um, the rest of it. So I think I'm happy with this one. It's taken me a little bit of time to perfect it and I probably will just pop a few other bits and pieces in it whilst I'm finishing off the others just to ensure that I have enough for all of them. But I popped a few of the spray roses in and I think it just makes it. I've also popped a little bit of eucalyptus in. I've added one of the beautiful avalanche roses, the blush roses. I've added in the white tulips with the yellow centers, the yellow tulips. Fingers crossed they've had enough time to acclimatize and they're not going to flop. But anyway, I am now going to put you on time lapse, finish off the others, and then we're going to come back and perfect them together. I have finished 
finished the bigger vases and they look so beautiful. I've also got really rather a lot left over. So what I did is I just filled out a few gaps that I was a little bit nervous about running out. Um, however, we still have a lot of the pink, blush pink roses left over. A few tulips, these beautiful spray roses. So what I've done is I've actually, pop you back there for a mo. Um, gone ahead and done my little bud vases and I think there is something so sweet and simplistic about having a clear glass um, tiny little bud vase and having almost like one or two of the beautiful tulips and then here I've done one yellow one I've done a little tiny spray pink rose and a yellow tulip and I think they look so beautiful so I'm going to dot those around and then what I'm going to do is create a beautiful floral arrangement for the powder rooms. But it is time to start placing them on the table and starting to really understand where things are going to go. So let's move into the kitchen and start creating this tablescape together. This is the table. <laughs> it is looking very, very bare, but this is the table runner that I've chosen to use. This is something we've had for years. It is a Williams and Simona. It's an American brand. And look at how sweet it is. It's got the bunnies and we bring it out every year. However, sometimes it can look a little bit busy, but I'm hoping with the florals that we have and the placemats, I think it's just going to tone in beautifully. But if you look to the detail, you'll see these gorgeous little rabbits. We are going to build this together. I'm going to go and get the florals and we will place them. I've then got these fabulous bunnies. I don't know whether you can see, but I've actually got the lemon trees at the top. We have a really sweet little Easter garland. It's really, really dainty, but you can see the little, tiny little eggs. I'll give you a close up of it later, but we've got a few more of these bunnies and they look so sweet dotted down the table. So I'm definitely going to be using these bad boys. So cute. I'm gonna quickly go and get the florals and come back. So what I like to do is place my larger floral arrangements first and I actually tend to place them in a diagonal so that they're not in a straight line and as we have six I'm going to evenly distribute them around the table like so <laughs> it looks so gorgeous there we go we actually had to add in the extra piece into the table as we are now 12 guests and as I said I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery as I don't have 12 of these placemats but I think if I place my edition 94 ones at the end no one is really going to notice and I think the actual edge of the green will tie in these gorgeous little bunny rabbits and now I'm gonna go around placing the little bud vases on the opposite diagonals I actually bought these from Covent Garden Flower Market. If you haven't been to Covent, Gar Flower Covent Garden Flower Market, it's great for finding these little nicky nacky bits. I have had them for years for cheap as chips. That looks pretty. I think I am going to do a few more bud vases. I'm actually going to pick probably a greeny tone I'm really loving this fresh green and yellow at the moment, but I do like adding a hint of pink when it's Easter because I just think it looks so pretty. Right, I'm going to be back in a jiffy. I'm going to get a green posy with some flowers. I think these are perfect. Look at how sweet they are. I've put an avalanche rose in each, beautiful tulip and a spray rose. And that is going to go perfectly there. What's really important is to actually walk around the table and ensure that all angles look perfect. We need one more here and we need one more here. That lighting is driving me utterly nuts. It is okay at this stage to have a few gaps because one of the most important things about a tablescape is lighting. We don't like having the really bright lights on and especially when the sun goes down. You want to be able to light something and create a real atmosphere. So we have these beautiful ones. I actually think these are ochre. They're like little artichokes and go along with the green theme. Oh, she's a poet. <laughs> 
So I'm going to dot them in the perfect little spots. Look at that, how pretty it looks already. And we are nowhere near finished. Then we've got to put the placemats, we've then got to lay the table with our dinner service, glasses. I know it sounds crazy, but glasses are one of my favorite things to place because I just think it really creates such gravitas. Anyway, let's keep going. The sunshine is killing me in terms of the lighting, but there you go. There is a little bit more of a close-up as to our fireplace. These really, really pretty little Easter eggs and then the bunnies. Don't they look gorgeous? I am also going to hang our Easter, Happy Easter garland. It's really sweet, all these beautiful pastel-y colours and the perfect colours for our tablescape. Again, fresh flowers. I do love a planter. I think it looks rustic and super classy. I've just placed the bunnies and they look so cute. Again, more lighting. We have these beautiful candlesticks. These are from a brand called Deco Candle and they're actually really lovely because they're all different heights. And these are Mrs. Alice pale green pastel candles. And I really love that. I think it just creates dimension on the table. Highs and lows. Also, top tip. If you have new candles, ensure you light them. Please excuse this mess. This is going. This is going. <laughs> Not meant to see that bit. So I'm going to then pop all of the candles on and then it will really create the highs and the lows and it won't all be just one level. Then we're going to dot a few little mini eggs. Irresistible mini eggs. I will have to refrain from having one. So let's pop these candlesticks. So we have, I think, three highs and then a few different lows. I'm gonna pop that one there and then we want the other high one just to make sure that the table is properly balanced. I'm gonna pop this one here and then I'm gonna go in. It is most certainly starting to come together. So as you can see, we dotted the larger vases, then the bud vases, then we popped a little bit of lighting on the table, and then we actually needed a couple more green vases, just to ensure that the heavy color here is green. I don't want it to be too pinky, make it look like Valentine's or birthday party, certainly Easter. And uh, then we popped the tall candlesticks. Now, because I don't have enough Rebecca Oodle placemats, I am going to use my Edition 94 ones and then actually place the Rebecca Oodles over the top, however, not at the heads. I wish I had 12, but I only have eight. So we've got to try and make that work. So I'm gonna place these around. Again, the natural with the green, I think looks really, really classy. Also, around the other side. One more. Voila! So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm truly hoping by placing eight of these is not going to look too odd without the other four. But let's have a little look. I think if we were to do maybe every other one would look really good. Actually, I think that that creates a little bit of texture to the table. Hmm. I really like that. Maybe actually the heads then, and just miss out the middle ones. I think that that looks really nice. I actually think the really, really natural coloured placemats, the Rebecca Oodle ones, picks up the whites and the creams of the tulips. I think that looks really lovely. So it's every other one, including the heads. Hmm. I'm sure Marcus will have something to say about that. He won't be liking it in terms of his OCD, but I'm loving it. Okay, let's keep building this tablescape. 
it's time to place these stunning Rebecca Oodle napkins. Again, I've got the same issue. I've only got eight. So I'm going to place them exactly where I placed the Rebecca Oodle placemats and then actually go with a really natural green linen napkin for the other four. I do also have these beautiful little beaded dragonflies. They're something that we've had in our family for years and years. I, I can't really remember not having them. So strange. Please excuse the ice machine as well, you can hear that. Working its magic, fingers crossed for tomorrow. I'm also praying that this sunshine stays. So please all do your little sun dances for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these around the table and fingers crossed the green look beautiful alongside. I wish I had 12 of everything. Um, I'm definitely going to have to buy the other four so that we don't have to play this jiggery pokery with the other linens. But I really think with the dragonfly and against the natural color of the Rebecca Oodle placemat, I think it's going to look beautiful. <laughs> The Rebecca Oodle napkins are placed around the table. These are my green linen ones. They're just classic green linen napkins. They're great quality, they wash so well. Where are these from? They are from a place where I ripped out the labels. I think they actually might be Williams and Sonoma. Again, I will have a little look and I will link below. But I've also got these golden, almost yellow toned beaded dragonflies. And I just think they will make the yellow tones of the tulips on the table pop. I think it'll really bring the yellow and the golden tones together. So let's place them on the table. really mean and it is so cruel but they actually love them i bought the boys little easter bunny hats epic epic have never giggled quite so much in my life Odie loves his he was trotting around in it this morning thinking he was literally like god's gift absolutely hysterical you on the other hand you weren't so sure were you you weren't so sure oh my goodness he's just woken up from his nap having me. Yeah, yeah. You didn't like your rabbit ears, did you? <laughs> your mummy's brer rabbit. He's a brer rabbit. <laughs> I will show you later. You have to see. They're little bunny ears. We're going to dress you up for guests' arrival. And then I promise I'll take them off. I know. Mm. Oh, gosh, I love you more than anything in the world. We're going to go around the orchard in a moment. Show everybody the beautiful garden. Yes. Okay. Right, the last napkin is going on and I love it. The sunshine is just literally giving me life. So this is what it looks like so far. To give you a little bit more of a close up, this is what it's looking like so far. I think it looks beautiful. Look at the napkins alongside the dragonflies the beautiful florals, the bunny rabbits. It's looking gorgeous, but we are nowhere near finished, ladies and gentlemen. I've just finished placing the glasses and I have the water glasses left. I have showed these to you before. These are my St. Louis uh, glasses. Um, they are actually my mother's. They are really, really special. They are the water glasses that we bring out for literally every occasion. And they are the most beautiful green. And I think they will look incredible. I have a little someone. <laughs> this is so sweet. Oh, look at him. <laughs> what are you doing sitting on mommy's dress? How are you helping? Are you helping? Are you going to lay the table with the glasses? Yeah? Yeah? Are you going to help? Are you going to help? Oh, I've got little helpers today. They're nagging at me to take them round the orchard. 
I'm gonna quickly paste these and then we are going to go around the garden. I promise, Wig Pig, I promise. Look at them, they're all harassing me. Harassing, Mummy, you're harassing, Mummy. And then we're gonna go out, I promise. It is getting really rather full on the table now. As you can see, early on, do not worry if there are gaps because trust me with everything else, it really does fill up quite quickly. I love the green. I just think they look fantastic. There we go. That's that side done. I am thinking that the floral arrangements would look a touch better if there was a little bit more yellow. What do we think? I love it so far. I love it. Right, boys, come on then. Let's go out. I think they want to go around the orchard, don't you? I think you want to go around the orchard. Don't you? Yeah. Let's go. Oh my goodness me, sausage snogs. Sausage snogs! Come on then boys, let's go. Lancelot insists on bringing his bone everywhere with him. Odie, that's quite a lot, thank you. Bring your bone. Come on, Wiggs. Through the orchard we go. Oh, pardon Rusty. Don't want to see you tinkle. We have an abundance of daffodils that are just almost, as you can see, the majority of them have flowered. But look at that. They just bring me so much happiness. Let's go and have a little look at the tulips. And here are the magnificent tulips. They haven't all quite come into bloom yet. We still have some beautiful pinks and yellows to bloom here. But aren't these magical? They literally make me so happy. I come out here and all I can do is smile. The colour is exceptional. Whether one of them's open. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Here is the tablescape. I would say pretty much finished. As you can see, you've got the beautiful Rebecca Oodle placemats with the gorgeous napkins. And then just added in pieces that I've had for years. The glasses, beautiful little rabbits. I am so happy with the way that it turned out. I am going to just add in a few more yellow tulips. After walking around the orchard and the garden, I did actually cut a few rosemary sprigs and just pop them in there because I think the scent is so beautiful across the table, especially as we are having lamb tomorrow. I think it just makes it. I'm so happy, I think it looks gorgeous. Can't wait to see what everybody else thinks. Now we've got to get baking. In the kitchen now, and we are baking. This is Lady Linda's recipe, a very, very good friend of my mother's, and it is the most simple recipe. However, it is simply sublime. Scrum diddy yoshis. Really not that many ingredients at all, however, you need good dark chocolate. So I've actually jumped ahead and separated my eggs. I've got eight eggs here and I've separated the whites to the yolks. I'm then going to heat a pan of boiling water, add a glass bowl over the top and we're going to melt the dark chocolate. And then I'm going to show you how I beat my egg whites. We're going to mix in the egg yolks and then it's all going to come together. I'm making it today because chocolate mousse tastes better when it sets overnight in the fridge. I think so anyway. Also preparation. I'm going to be running around like a headless chicken anyway tomorrow. I do not need to be stressing <laughs> about the chocolate mousse. So anything that we can potentially get done today 100%. I am a woman who is organized. I don't like to stress. I also hate mess. So get it done today and then it is out of the way. I'm also going to be baking 
my all-time favorite lemon polenta cake. I'll need to dig the book out. Um, I've got to a point now that I just know the ingredients off by heart. But if I get the book, you'll be able to see how many times we've used this recipe because the page is covered in butter and sugar and it's a well-loved book. But anyway, let's get on with this chocolate mousse. I'm gonna turn the hob on and let's start melting this chocolate got all the chocolate and what we need to do first is break up the chocolate into small pieces and then we're going to have a large pan boiling water and then this is going to melt in the glass bowl we're just breaking up the chocolate into small pieces so that it can melt i'm going to use all of this chocolate <laughs> because we are 12 people and trust me it is going to taste Rum Didiotius. Just checking I haven't got <laughs> chocolate around my face. So the chocolate has melted and it is still sort of I would say lukewarm. I'm now going to stir in my four egg yolks. You have to ensure that the chocolate is not too hot otherwise the disaster would happen and the egg begin to cook and we don't want that so it's just got to be warm and we're going to just stir this in that is already thickening up to perfection now i've just popped that to one side to rest and to cool and whilst that cools we're going to beat the egg whites we're looking for light and fluffy it is also really important not to overbeat do I sound like one of those people like, make sure it's beaten enough and not too overbeaten? <laughs> there is a fine line. Almost there. Gets the bingo wings going. <laughs> oh gosh. I found the book when I spoke about the lemon and polenta cake. So it is the River Cafe Cookbook. Honestly, this book is like sticky. <laughs> you see how much we've been using it. And we cook the polenta almond and lemon cake. It is next level. It is our party piece. We bring it out time and time again and everybody loves it. So in terms of ingredients, we need unsalted butter, caster sugar, ground almonds, vanilla essence, six eggs, zest of four lemons, juice of one lemon, polenta flour, baking powder and salt. Let's get all of that together and then I will talk through the instructions. I mean, literally look at this, that's it. Short and sweet, easy and simple, but scrumptious. That is what we're going for. And then I'm pretty much organized. I've got this to do and then have a good old tidy. And then I can't do anything else until tomorrow morning. I'm gonna get up very early, shower, wash and blow dry, and probably come downstairs in my rollers and get jiffing. Anyway, I'm gonna get my ingredients out and let's bake this together. So I have measured out all of the ingredients that we need. So I've got the ground almond, the polenta, I've got the sugar. I did actually have to wait a little while because the unsalted butter was actually in the fridge and we need it at room temperature. So now it is the perfect temperature. First things first, we are going to take the butter and we are going to beat it into the golden caster sugar until it is light, fluffy and pale. So we need 450 grams. Now these are 250, so we need almost all of it. We just need to leave 50 grams behind. It is just gone 9 p.m. <laughs> so we need to get this done really rather quickly so that I can become a sofa slug with the sausages and Marcus. Right, I told you guys that this was delicious. I never told you that it was healthy. <laughs> it is really, really worth it though, I promise you. It is sweet, it is sticky, it is moist. It's just everything that you want a lemony, sugary cake to be. The texture of the polenta is really, really special. And trust me, I'm not a big polenta person. I don't really like polenta. This cake will rock your world. Okay, so I'm going to beat, I'm gonna try. <laughs> it's not going very well. We need to beat this butter 
and sugar together. Oh golly, oh golly. Right, I'm going to battle with the butter and I will be back. <laughs> My arms are exhausted. So I've brought out the big guns. The Kenwood is going to do the mixing for me until it is light, fluffy and pale. Okay. I think that is perfecto. Delicioso. Right, I'm now going to add in the ground almonds and the vanilla essence. Need two teaspoons of this. I'm going to go and find myself a teaspoon. One, two, and a dash for luck. <laughs> there we go, and then we need the ground almonds. I just want to stir this in. So I need a spatula. This is perfect. Just gonna mix that in. It's thickening up beautifully. Definitely a little bit of elbow grease with this recipe. I'm literally going to give people a little sliver, a touch of double cream, and it will be perfect. Oh, now this is what I mean <laughs> by a bit of elbow grease. Definitely arm day. Wiggy is hopeful down here that I'm going to drop a little bit of butter and sugar. Yes, he's my little baking sous chef. You're my little sous chef, aren't you? This is looking somewhat a little bit like dough at the moment. But by the time we add in our six eggs, it's going to look a little somewhat like cake mixture. I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, I think we need to call it a night. It is now time to add the eggs. We're gonna add six eggs, one at a time. And I'm going to let the Kenwood do the work for me. Now we need a zest of four lemons and the juice of one whole lemon. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and zest and juice, and then we can add it together. The smell of citrus and just fresh lemon is just beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we are going to fold in the lemon zest, we're going to fold in also the polenta, the baking powder and the juice from one whole lemon. I do have a very handy little device that is not in there. <laughs> I think it's in here. It is a little juicing. There we go. A little lemon juicer, which is fab. You literally cut the lemon in half, pop it in there, and, and ready to rock and roll. We are done with him. We can pop him back. Sweet, buttery, and delicious. I'm definitely one of those who likes to lick the spoon. Terrible, I know. Shouldn't admit it, but that is just me. We're now going to fold in the lemon zest. Oh, gosh, I cannot wait to have this tomorrow. Just quickly half the lemon, pop it in here. I'm just going to fold in that lemon zest, lightly squeezing the lemon at the same time. A little bit of multitasking here. There we go. A little bit more of a squeezel with two hands. And when I mean folding, you literally, as though you're like folding the mixture on top, each layer on top. So you're not mixing it, you're not whisking it, you're literally just folding the mixture on top of itself. Now we're going to fold in the polenta, pop a little bit in and fold. When I first heard about this recipe, I thought, mm, polenta, I'm not sure about that. But the texture and the consistency of this cake is really what makes it special. It's what really, really makes you remember it <laughs> and crave it, trust me. Right, fold, 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 and then we're going to fold the last bit, which is the baking powder and just a pinch of salt. In it goes. And then, I'm afraid to say, it is my bedtime. I'm going to snuggle on the sofa with the sausages and Marcus, and then I have a feeling I'm... I'm not even gonna be able to keep my eyes open for this movie that he's selected. My arms are killing. <laughs> 
you have a workout and then you can eat the cake. So you're rewarded after all of your efforts. Now we need a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Got my little teaspoon. Do, do, do. Perfect, teaspoon and a half. Fold that in. All we have to do is spoon it into our prepared tin. Now this is something that I prepared slightly earlier. What I did is I greased the tin and then I sift a little bit of flour over the top. It just creates a really delicious crispy base and also ensures that it is not going to stick to the tin. Um, so really, really important. Do not skip this part. This is a 23 inch tin it's from John Lewis. Nothing special. I will link it below. Right. I now need to get myself a big spoon and we're going to dollop. And the last little piece of the resistance is a pinch of sea salt. Again, give it a good fold. And then we are going to dollop. Quite literally, dollop. <laughs> now make sure that it is evenly distributed through the tin. I've preheated my oven to 160 and it's gonna be in the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes. But I would suggest to eyeball it because it needs to be golden brown. And really, it turns golden brown really rather quickly. So definitely at about the 35 minute mark. Set your timer and then eyeball it. And voila beautiful that is going to be scrumptious just making sure that it's going to look beautiful when it comes out she is ready for the oven that is my lemon and polenta cake ready for the oven let's pop it minutes set I've got 35 minutes on the sofa with the boys chill out take the cake out pop it on a tray to cool and then it's bedtime wake up big day tomorrow huge day it's gonna be fabulous Good morning, my darlings. The sun is shining and the table is looking beautiful. I am so pleased with the way that it has turned out. I've added in a touch more yellow tulips to really create that Easter feeling and the colors look sensational together. I am absolutely obsessed. I hope people love it as much as I do. I'm just so in love with the Rebecca Oodle things, along with the incredible Flowered flowers. Now, if you don't know about Flowered, they are the most incredible online platform for flowers. If you live in London, they also do same day delivery. However, if you do live outside of London, they are next day. Aren't oh, these just gorgeous? Then up here we have Mr. and Mrs. Bunny. This is my crudite basket. So what I do is I build up the bottom with actually some tea towels and then I create the most incredible, rather over the top crudite basket with all of my dips. I then have my lemon and polenta cake here. I've just decorated it really, really simply by popping on some mini eggs. I use the rest of the roses here along with a beautiful vase of yellow and white tulips and I think that looks gorgeous. I'm also going to add a dip in here which I think is really really fun and interactive. I've placed all of my little bowls that I want to use for my canapes and my dips. Over here we have the fennel. I need to parboil the fennel and we are doing fennel gratin, some beautiful new potatoes, green beans with orange zest and flaked almonds. 
Our lamb shoulders have already been in the oven for an hour. They are slow cooking at 160 for about three, three and a half hours. And then I can't even begin to tell you, they just fall apart. I'm gonna take two forks and actually shred the lamb, almost like Moroccan style. It is scrumptious. Then in the scullery, I'm just organizing which serving ware I wish to use. Now as a family, we collect these incredible serving platters. I have about three of them. My mum has about 10 <laughs> and Kimberly also has really rather a few of them. So I'm just picking which ones I want to use. And as I said, I'm going for a little bit of a Moroccan theme. So when I was in Marrakesh, we picked up this hilarious little bread, Moroccan bread basket and I'm finally able to use it which I'm so excited about so I'm going to pop the focaccia and the Moroccan breads in there this is for my fennel gratin I have already prepared my grilled vegetables now I've got aubergines courgettes onions peppers um, and some shallots in there and I've got this rose harissa uh, marinade which I did this morning so those have been sitting there for probably about a couple of hours and I'm going to slowly roast them in the oven and it's going to be added to a couscous and then we're going to melt some goat's cheese on the top and it is really something else. I absolutely adore this recipe. Then I've got my cheese board of which I haven't taken my cheeses out and then one of our family um, silver pieces. I love this. This is a little cheese biscuit barrel and it's so pretty. They're little shells. These come down and then actually these go up incredible i love pieces like this we actually have a pair of them however um we don't need to today we just need the one the hair and the makeup is done however i am still in my comfies i don't need to pop on my dress just yet because i am still very much in baking cooking mode and i do not want to get any splashes on my dress my phone is going crazy and i have actually had really sadly two people drop out it always happens it's a little bit frustrating so i'm going to have to play jiggery pokery with the table yesterday we were so worried about not having enough placemats and now we are down to 10 guests i just can't get over this table doesn't it look just magnificent it's not crazy over the top how my mother and I would normally do it. However, of course, it looks like we've made a serious Easter effort. I've also placed the Happy Easter here. I couldn't get it to stay at the top here. It just kept falling down. And I thought it was a shame not to use it. I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I love it. Then we've got the silver champagne buckets. Those are going to be filled with ice and champagne bottles will be placed into there. The sun is shining and I've made a pretty little table out here. Very, very classic, rather natural, laid back, but gorgeous. We've also popped the cushions out so that people would like to sit in the sunshine with a mocktail, cocktail or glass of champagne. It is 10 to one. I've got to pop in the vegetables so that they really, really slow roast in the bottom part of the arga. I've then got to take out the lamb shoulders at two o'clock and they are going to rest in the warming oven for an hour. Really, really, really slow cook. They are succulent, they are soft. Really, it is such a special recipe. I can't wait to show you the final, final part. I've now got to build my crudite basket. It does take some time. I prepped all the vegetables this morning. It's all chopped up and we're going to pop it out together. My handsome husband is helping with the guacamole. You're doing the avocados, baby. Yeah. Well done. So I've actually pre-prepared the best bit of the guacamole, which is red onions, coriander, cherry tomatoes, a little bit of Tabasco, fresh chili, lime, and then all you need to do is prepare the avocados at the last moment, otherwise they go brown. Um, that is going to be absolutely delish. Last little glimpse of the table, which I'm sure is going to be destroyed in about five minutes. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. As you can see, had to play a little bit of jiggery 
jiggery pokery with the table, but actually it has worked out beautifully. This is our canapé island. As you can see, the crudité basket is a real showstopper and really rather inexpensive to do. You've got so many gorgeous fresh vegetables. I've then done my famous guacamole, olives with manchego, artichokes, beetroot, hummus. Got my favorite salmon pate mixed in with lemon juice and sour cream. We've got Moroccan hummus, an incredible charcuterie board, lots of dips. You've got the little bunnies there with their vegetables. And this is just gorgeous. I have a feeling today is going to be amazing. Now not resembling a lady like a headless chicken, <laughs> I am delighted to say I am finally dressed for Easter Sunday. It is going to be such a special day and look at this dress. This is the dress that I unboxed with you yesterday from Arvel. I am besotted. I am in love with everything. The colour for one is perfection. The covered buttons, the detail, it's almost as though it's got boning in it, yet it doesn't. It's the fabric and the stitching that really, really holds you in. And then you've got this beautiful full skirt. I feel so pretty and elegant in this and it is the perfect colour that is very in keeping with our Easter table today. I can't wait for people to arrive. About five minutes, so I've always got that one guest who's early, so I'm going to have to run. I will share as much as I possibly can do with you. Let's enjoy Easter Sunday together. <laughs> Our homemade focaccia has just come out of the oven and it looks incredible. I've just stepped away for a moment and come into the scullery to prepare. Oh, please excuse me, using my teeth. <laughs> do not try that at home. To do the fennel gratin. So what I've done is I've already parboiled the fennel, just so I can show you. And I have placed it into an oven baking dish. I've poured an obscene amount of double cream over the top. We need to salt and pepper generously. And then we need to smother in Gruyere cheese. Now I've cheated slightly and I've actually bought the grated version from Waitrose. And this is absolutely Grummy. This will rock your world. And you bake it in the oven. It is so unctuous. It is really rather rich. So you actually don't need very much of it at all. It's so good and it accompanies lamb beautifully. Oh, I didn't bring a knife or a pair of scissors in here with me. And I should be wearing my pinny. <laughs> so I don't get anything on this beautiful dress. And I'm now actually going to mix this up slightly. My fennel gratin. So as you can see, I've got the fennel underneath. It is swimming in double cream and it's got the grillet on the top. I have heavily seasoned it with salt and pepper and it is going to be truly unctuous. in the background say hi <laughs> so here we have my Moroccan pulled lamb the two shoulders have been shredded and served with lamb's lettuce and pomegranate seeds my fennel gratin which is terrible on the hips and bottom but trust me worth every single bite then we have my green beans with orange zest and flaked almonds some beautiful fresh new potatoes with butter and mint and then this is my moroccan and rose harissa couscous so many different mediterranean vegetables topped with goat's cheese and coriander and then we have homemade focaccia mm, it's gonna be yummy lunch is served Nicholas is on oh. cheese board duty. Talk me through the cheese board. Okay, what else did we get? And the king cut emmental. 
What is that? A Prezi Molo Vital. That's a Gonzola. A blue. That's a Gonzola. That's Stilton for Mark. Stilton for Mark. We've got a Truffle Brie for Laura. That is a Comp. Okay. That's a Manchego. A Manchego cheddar. cheddar. Grapes, figs, chili jam, scrum didiocious.